Give you some good and sun bump before they let you in with the air conditioning. Wow, this is a great crowd. Thank you all so much for coming. Um, my name is Jackson Osborne, and welcome to our June detour. Um, before we get started, I'd like to do a little introduction of the home at 2057 Lakeside. Welcome to the home of Byron Rom Romanowicz, the house that he built. Um, he was a Lexington architect who was responsible for a lot of our local architecture that we have here. Um, notable ones being the uh, Kincaid Towers, uh, the Radisson Hotel on Vine, and my favorite, the Singletary Center. Uh, this, though, being his home, is his most personal project. And even though it was built in the 70s, it was meant to keep on going. It had a multifocal view. One of the things that his daughter Cynthia pointed out to me was um, each space of the home could be one's own living space. Um, he was a family man, and he was also a jazz musician, which is kind of what that represents in the home. <laughs> Adapting and changing just like the music that he loved was. Um, so we are so grateful to have you out here, um, and thank you for coming. Cynthia, is there anything that you would like to say to welcome people in? Um, I'm just, thank you for coming. Uh, I want everybody to be able to see uh, how talented my dad was. Hard to have grown up in this home because my home is not quite as nice as, you know, the ones that I've had in the past are hard to live up to something like this. So thank you for coming. Oh, what? One more thing. Um, we will give you another round of applause, but because this house is so important and Byron was such an important part of Lexington, uh, a lot of people don't think of 1970s as reaching into that historic category. Uh, they are wrong. They can check with the Secretary of Interior Standards. But we want um, the person who comes to this home to know this is historic. The work in there is important. So we have something for you. You need to check your mail. <laughs> <laughs> This was my um, this was my dad's life partner after my mom passed away. She is another reason that the house is still standing because she helped take care of it very well, and um, and she made his the last years of his life very happy. So she lived here for I lived here years. the past fifteen years. So if you have any questions, mm -hmm. I might be able to answer. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll Uh, I think we moved over from when I was eight. 
and there was a house three doors down and across the street that we lived in. And I actually have pictures of those houses. Um, the house, unfortunately, across the street does not look anything like it did when my dad built it in that house one of the wars. Um, but we do at least have the pictures of what it used to look like. So I've got those in the folder, the old house and the current house. How old are you? You can feel free to get out of there. That might be easier because I don't think there's anybody down there. Well, I'm kind of still living. Yeah. I'm living, well, I, I re moved back in here. Oh, I see. But, um, I mean, I lived here through college until I got my own apartment and, and then my own house and everything. So I've been out on my own. But my dad was a little sick towards the end of his life. He had, he had some dementia. And his health was actually very good until about the last six months of his life. And then I helped take care of him for a while with that. Um, but he was... I mean, he was still, he talked about architecture and jazz, and the band was sharp. <laughs> so, uh, he was, sure. those were two big lives of his, you know, um, Some things have changed. We had, we had some other mid-century modern pieces. Some of them got weathered. And unfortunately, they didn't make it. But, um, but yes, essentially, this was it. Really? Any kind of now, I have a brother and sister, and they may be watching mine. One's in Chicago and one's in Chicago. So this is the kitchen when my mom was here. There was a lot more stuff on the refrigerator, lots and lots of articles and cartoons and kids drawings and things. My mom was. A John Tuska's wife, Miriam, and John Tuska was a professor at UK, a local artist. A lot of his artwork is here in the house. A lot of pottery is, is this, this um, bowl over here, and the, and the picture on the wall. Those, not, not the wood bowl, but the wood bowl. The ceramic over here, that's a John Tuska. But my mom was friends with Miriam, and she was an amazing collector of all kinds of things. And so my mom would go to her flea markets and different places and find just really amazing knickknacks, which sometimes drove my dad crazy because he wanted green lines. And mom always found interesting things to bring home. And so, I mean, we had, um, had porky pine cool boxes that Native Americans made. And we had the same thing that was a lot downstairs. Um, she had antique Christmas ornaments and quilts that she would find with Miriam. Um, just interesting artwork or things to put on the wall or just, I don't know, there were all kinds of things. So there, there was a lot more in the house at the time that I was growing up. And my mom could cook. My mom, we, we all developed a lot of And that's one of the reasons why it was such an open space is because she was in the kitchen hall. Um, my grandmother was from um, Russia, and man, she could, she could cook. And so my mom learned it from her. I unfortunately didn't pick up as much as I should have. I wish I had. And um, 
my sister did a little bit more. But but that, you know, all of the interests that we had, um, my brother liked to do his um, we like to build model airplanes, um, we like to do ceramics, we like to paint. So all of those areas, he kind of found places for us to be able to do those maps and everything and that's reflected in, in how he designed the house of course. So, um, yeah, the elevator is right over there. And can you but tell us the not, open. Can you yeah. tell us the elevator story one more time because it cut off before, so just right quick. The elevator was not originally the house. It was built later and um, my dad looked at the plans and figured out a way to make sure that we could put them in so that it looked like it was original the house. It doesn't stick out like the sort of thing. And when it was over, and here I grew up in the house, but after I looked at it, I was like, wait a minute, what did it look like before? Because it looked like it had just been built with the original house. And so I thought that was pretty amazing that he was able to do that. And I think I, as the years go by and the more I learn about this architecture, the more impressed I am. Because, you know, he was my dad, but here he was this It's a, it's a great legacy. He was, he was pretty sharp up until his death. Um, when you talked about architecture, he could really just, he'd still just go into the mode, he loved it.
Oh, you're fine. about the door. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Let me just get a good... All right. I thought, I thought we were going to get a talk on the door. Well, we are. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm a speaker. <laughs> Not only that, um, his house was built when I was in design school at UK. I was an interior design major. When Jackson mentioned that the door was by forms and surfaces, that was one of the like it things that you always wanted to have in your project. And the rep brought in beautiful boxes, all detailed of every kind of pattern that they had. So it's really fun to see this all these many years later and, you know, just remember how exciting and uh, cutting edge it was at the time that it was installed. Thank you.
sense <laughs> for the days of iPhones. Yeah. It does have a view of the water. <laughs>
this, uh, this kind of interesting check here. Thank <laughs> you. 